I spent $100 in about a week building an app using only AI, and it was both awesome and kind of mid at the same time. At this point, we've all heard about vibe coding, which is where you just use prompts and work with an AI coding agent to build your project for you. The claim is that these tools democratize access to building websites, apps, games, and more. And if you just watch the demos, it is really impressive. You can go from zero to a fully built app with payments, logins, and all the bells and whistles in like a couple of hours, even if you have no software engineering experience. This has made a lot of people worry about the future of their jobs in tech. What's the point of learning to code or trying to enter tech if AI can do our jobs better and faster, and it's made other people think they can become the next tech billionaire even without knowing how to code. I work in machine learning at Amazon and I build production systems every day, so I know how to code and some system design stuff, but I have very little experience with real software engineering or app development, so I figured I'd try out vibe coding and see what it can do. For my app, I wanted to solve this annoying little problem I had recently. I was at a book sale and I didn't recognize any of the titles, so I didn't know what to buy and I ended up just not buying anything. My idea was pretty simple. You put in your reading preferences and Goodreads history, scan a bookshelf with your phone, and an AI model recognizes the books and makes recommendations. You can save stuff to read later. I deliberately kept the app really basic with no user accounts or payments. I just added affiliate links to hopefully cover the API calls and some rate limiting with simple fallback so it wouldn't, you know, bankrupt me if it somehow got a lot of traffic. I bought a domain on Squarespace and deployed it. So let me walk you through what actually happened when I tried to build this thing. I used Replit in the agentic mode for this app, at least at first. I did not check the code it was generating at all and relied solely on prompts. I wanted to see what problems I would run into if I came into this as a complete newbie. At first, it did feel pretty magical. The speed was really impressive. It took about two hours to have all of the core functionality set up, including a database and AI functionality. I could see why people get excited about this stuff. But after that, it started to go downhill. I know almost all of the problems I'm about to show you do have solutions even within Replit. But the thing is, you would need to know to look out for these problems to know to try to find solutions. If you're someone who genuinely doesn't know how to code or build apps, you probably wouldn't even know these problems existed. So let me show you some of the stuff I ran into. First off, the AI is way too confident. It'll tell you it's implemented something and you're like, cool, that's done except it hasn't actually done it. It's just hard-coded some fake data and called it a day. I cannot tell you how many times it said we're using this API when it had literally just put in some weird hard-coded fallback. The database setup was absolutely crazy. There were duplicate tables, IDs that didn't match between different parts of the database, and my favorite part, my development database and the production database were the same database. So if you deployed your app, your real user data could get messed up by things you were doing in development. A normal person building their first app would have no idea this was even a problem until they broke something. And speaking of databases, there are no safety rails. The AI can just delete all of your data in one go if it feels like it. There's no warnings and it won't ask you to confirm if it's about to do something crazy, like just nuke everything. Really, the whole development workflow is kind of a mess. Git support exists, but it's buried somewhere and it's not really emphasized. There's no CI CD pipeline unless you set it up yourself. Replit just kind of throws everything together without separate build and deploy stages. The security stuff was also really bad. I found hard-coded passwords multiple times. At one point, my actual API credentials were just being displayed on a public page. This even passed the built-in Replit security scanner, by the way. The really frustrating part is that you feel like you're making progress because you can see and interact with something super fast. You've got this app that looks legit. People can click around, it does stuff, but the actual implementation is a big mess. And because you don't know the code, it's really hard to figure out what the problems are or how to fix them. And you're constantly thinking, okay, I just need to spend another $10 to fix this one thing, and then another $10 for the next thing. So don't get me wrong, obviously spending $100 total is way cheaper than hiring someone to build this or even like paying myself my own hourly wage for this work pre-AI. But it's sneaky how the costs add up when you're troubleshooting stuff that looks like it should work. The whole experience felt like being a PM for a really fast but really dumb coder. Like it would mostly do what I asked, but it had no common sense that a real engineer would have. For example, the starter app it built had no terms of service or monitoring and alerting. The app could break in a lot of fun ways and I would have no idea. The AI is also super lazy. You can watch its logic where it spells out what the right thing to do would be. And then it will say, yeah, but that's hard. So it'll just delete the failing test or hard code a solution. A regular person building an app for the first time would run into a ton of potential issues that could screw them over. If they don't know they need to disclose affiliate links, they could get in trouble from the FTC. If they don't know to rate limit their APIs, they could spend a ton of money on accident. If they don't know to separate their dev and prod environments, they could accidentally wipe out all their user data. The list goes on and on. Much of this isn't specific to vibe coding, but I think it can give a false sense of security to non-devs who don't know what they don't know. So look, I don't want to be completely negative here because there are definitely some things that AI coding tools are genuinely good at. The speed is obviously incredible. 
When it works, you can go from an idea to a working prototype super fast. A few years ago, GitHub found that developers using Copilot code up to 55% faster on average, and nowadays I'd say it's much more than that. I ultimately moved my project to Cursor and redeployed on Versal, and working with Cloud4 was really impressive. AI is also awesome at boilerplate code, or when implementing something you've done before but just with some minor tweaks. For example, I build a lot of similar pipelines at work for slightly different use cases, and I can point the AI to a previous project I've done, give explicit instructions on what to change, and have the whole thing done in like an hour, when previously it would have probably taken me a day or so. Of course, I love it for documentation and writing or debugging tests, and it can be great as a learning tool. You can ask questions about a code base and get simple, clear explanations. You just have to put in the effort to watch what it's doing and try to understand on your own, and it can be easy to get lazy. But all of these strengths work best when you already kind of know what you're doing. If you can review the code it generates and spot the problems, if you know what questions to ask and what to double check, then yeah, it's a massive productivity boost. The problem is when people think it can replace actually understanding what you're building. I'll go over some concrete best practices for vibe coding safely in a moment, but first I wanted to share some resources that can help you build that fundamental knowledge that you need even in the age of AI. Project Pro is a great site that has hundreds of end-to-end -end guided data science, data engineering, and machine learning projects that you can follow to show you how real applications are built end-to-end. -end. Every project shows the full repo, an architecture diagram, and step-by-step -step video walkthroughs. There's even mentorship available if you get stuck. This is a really good place to start when you're new to the field and not sure what you should even be looking out for when you're vibe coding. Another great resource is Educative's Grokking the System Design Interview course. Don't worry about the interview part, it's more a general overview of a lot of system design stuff that vibe coded apps are really bad at. I'll also drop some links for blogs on things like monitoring and observability, security fundamentals, and stuff like that. So check out the description for all those links. All right, let's get back to vibe coding. So if you're going to do this, here's what I learned about using AI coding tools without ending up with a disaster. First, don't go full YOLO mode like I did for this experiment. Instead, have the AI make a plan first, review and approve the plan, and check each step that it executes. Make sure it's fully tested before moving on. One thing that can work really well here is test-driven development. Start by writing tests that define the expected inputs and outputs, and then have the AI implement the functionality. The better you can define the problems and be confident in your tests, the happier you will be. Next, set up proper environments from day one. Have backups or guardrails on what the agent can and cannot do in different environments. Make sure you review everything for security issues. Ensure you're using proper secrets management, sanitizing logs, and validating inputs and outputs to block malicious folks from exploiting your app. Remember to set up monitoring and alerting for everything from your app's health to API calls to agent resource usage. Commit and push to GitHub often. Definitely use branches and don't allow pushes to main without a pull request. AI loves to make big changes to your app, so it's really important to always be able to roll back. Ideally, set up some simple CI CD to run linting, tests, and deploy to a staging environment before production. Don't forget about the legal and privacy requirements for whatever you're building, especially if you're handling user data. And finally, budget for more than you think. Not just money, but time. The last 20% of actually making things work properly took me 90% of my development time on this project. So if you're someone who's thinking about getting into tech, don't let the vibe coding hype fool you into thinking you can skip learning the fundamentals. If anything, those software engineering fundamentals are more important now that syntax isn't that big of a deal. You still need to understand how databases work, what good security practices look like, and how to debug when things go wrong. Plus, if you do learn to code well, you'll stand out in a job market where more and more juniors can't pass those technical interviews or just submit AI-generated code. For people already in tech, my take is that you should definitely be using these tools. They're legitimately useful for speeding up the boring stuff. But don't get lazy about code review and testing just because the output looks good enough. In my mind, the real democratization here isn't about making everyone a developer. It's really just about making developers way more productive which is still pretty rad, just different than what the marketing suggests. One thing this has enabled is a whole new world of opportunities to monetize your skills. My next video will be all about side hustles and how you can earn without a full-time job, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.